Hi, it's Dr. Z. In this video, I will introduce distribution of means. By the end of this video, you'll be able to describe the purpose of a distribution of means and understand the rules and formulas for a distribution of means. Recall that the word distribution is just a fancy way of saying a graph or a table of scores. A sample mean is the average of all the x scores in a sample. When put together, a distribution of means is just a graph of all the sample means from a larger population. The distribution of means follows certain rules that will allow us to start conduct conducting research using samples. Up until this point, we've only been working with a single score or a single person like this one Lego Star Wars Stormtrooper. In Chapter 3, you learn how to calculate a z-score for a single score x. In Chapter 4, you learn how to conduct a hypothesis test with a single score x. And finally, you learn how to use the normal curve table to find the critical region z when conducting a hypothesis test for a single score x. Again, though, all the research studies so far have only used a single person. Well, I don't know about you, but that's boring. Research needs more than one person or a sample, like this group of LEGO Star Wars stormtroopers. Now, you will learn how to calculate a z-score for a sample mean. Then you'll learn how to conduct a hypothesis test with a sample mean. And finally, you will learn how to use the distribution of means when conducting research on a sample. In other words, you used a normal curve table when you had a single score. Now that you have a sample, you must use a distribution of means. To better understand this new concept, we will do a LEGO activity. In this LEGO activity, the research scenario is that we're interested in how many hours of sleep that students got last night. The amount of sleep measured in hours is considered the data or the x scores. Imagine that you have a population of n equals 4 students who are represented by four separate Lego bricks. Each Lego brick represents a specific x score. One student had an x equals 2 hours of sleep, another student had x equals 4 hours, another one had x equals 6 hours, and finally the last student had x equals 8 hours of sleep last night. But wait, your population's too big to conduct a research study. Rather, we want to conduct research on a sample taken from this population. Specifically, you'll need to find all the possible samples of n equals 2 Legos from your population. Stay tuned for the LEGO Activity Demo next. To do this LEGO Activity, you will have a population of n equals 4 LEGOs. Each LEGO is a specific x-score. x equals 2, x equals 4, x equals 6, and x equals 8. But your population is too big to conduct a research study, so you have to find a sample to study. Specifically, you need to find a possible sample of n equals 2 Legos from your population. The first sample has to consist of two scores. So imagine randomly selecting x equals 4. This is considered your first score. And then we put the Lego brick back into the population, and then we randomly select a second Lego brick, let's say x equals 8. You now have your first sample. Now that you have a sample of n equals 2 scores, you'll calculate the sample mean. So 4 plus 8, your mean is the sum of x over n, and 4 plus 8 is 12, and 12 divided by 2 is 6. So that would be your first sample mean. 
Phew, that was just the first sample mean. Now you're going to complete the full table using every possible combination of your sample of two. So when you complete the table on your handout based on the data, you'll have 16 sample means. When you're done calculating the sample means, you will need to graph them. In other words, you need to graph them using a frequency histogram. Where the F's over here and your sample means are over here. And let's see what happens when this Lego activity is done. 